You know, Rachel, uh, first of all, as a communicator, you're very inspiring. But one of the reasons you're very inspiring is you're, you're very real. And, and um, you, what, what you shared with us is not a secret. Mm, exactly. What, 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 every, pretty much what she said, all of us already knew. Is that not true? Absolutely. So, so what inspired us? Was it what she said? No, it's what she did. Now catch this. It's what she did. What she said was good, but what she said was really good because she had done it. In other words, we want to back up all of your connections and communications with your actions. And, and, and so the credibility isn't the teaching. The credibility is the living. But when the living is good, the teaching gets better. And there are a whole bunch of people that are trying to give people something they don't have. Mm. And, 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 and we, we teach what we know, but we reproduce who we are. And so, Rachel, it was, it was terrific, and I'm so excited, and, and uh, we're going to have this, and we're going to have some time a little bit later to, to even get better acquainted, but you, you really did a great job. So let's talk about growth. Okay. Yes. Uh, what, what is the, of, of all of your, you've done a lot of growing, it's obvious, what, what, would, what would you be maybe most proud of as far as uh, your growth accomplishment, an area where you just really say, wow, I, I really grew in that area? So I think the, the area that I have struggled the most as an adult and that I'm, I'm most proud of is growing as a mom, uh, at which you have to understand, I, this sounds really obnoxious, but I'm good at work. I'm good. I can go in a room. I can run a team. I can do a meeting. I can scale a business. I can do, and then I would go home, and it was really hard at home, uh, meaning anyone, anyone ever had a toddler at home? <laughs> Anyone ever stayed at work a little bit longer because that was easier than dealing with the toddlers who were at home? Be honest. That was me. And so I really struggled and I felt so much shame about that because I thought, as a woman, I feel like I'm supposed to just feel natural at this and I didn't feel natural at it. And I managed that season of my life by drinking and drank way too much. Uh, to, to try and make myself feel calmer and to, to try and show up for everybody. And it led to massive anxiety. And it really was my personal growth journey started on the business side of things. Like I wanted to know how to grow my business. And so I started teaching myself these lessons. And then when I was in this really hard season with these two young kids and drinking and having anxiety attacks every day, I thought, I wonder if I could apply the way that I've approached learning about business to the way that I approach learning about taking care of myself and showing up for my family in the way that I wish that I could. Um, and I did, and it took years, but I'm so proud, more than anything that I've done, I'm proud of the relationship that I have in my marriage and with my children, because that doesn't come as easy to me as this does. It's harder, and very few women will admit that, I think a lot of guys, a lot, when I talk to, a lot of dads are like, I, I hear you, sister. But moms aren't supposed to say that. They're not yeah. supposed to say that it's yeah. hard for them. And it is hard for me. And I just finally did the work and was more graceful with myself and slowed down and didn't need to please everybody all the time. And it just became, it really became the life that I had always wanted to have. And I never, ever would have been able to tell you that life at home was what was going to give me the life I wanted. I always thought, you know, I grew up poor, so I thought if I could just make enough money, yeah, if sure. I could just grow the business, that'll sure. make me happy. Sure. So as, as odd as that sounds, that really is the thing I'm most proud of. Well, you know, and I think, Rachel, the, the, the hardest growth is the growth that you're either not committed to or not passionate about or not gifted in. Yeah, it's that's a, it's so a, real. It's a, and it sounds to me like the business was the natural growth, and so it was you kind of took to it like a duck to water, mm -hmm. but the other was something you had to, um, you had to, I don't know, make yourself do that, 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 that whole process. So help us out. I would, because I think all of us have areas where we, um, where we need to grow, but, but we, uh, we, we're not really gifted to grow in that area. Absolutely. So w could you give us one, just one little nugget of what we need to do to go do something that we're not really that committed to or that good at? I think the first step is probably admitting your weakness without shame because shame is defeating. Yeah, that's right. Shame doesn't help you. It doesn't motivate you. Admitting that you were struggling in this area, for me, admitting that I was struggling w was empowering sure. when I was able to do it without shame and also understanding the whys. So in the same way that I didn't have an example of a strong marriage, I didn't have... 
an example of the kind of parent that I want to be. And just because you don't have an example of something doesn't mean that you can't teach yourself. So have, that was like an epiphany for me. Like, dang, you taught yourself what a balance sheet is. You taught yourself how to grow your revenue. You taught yourself these. If you can teach yourself one thing, you can teach yourself anything. And that includes personal stuff. I don't think people think of that. I've heard you half a dozen times today talking about teaching yourself at Google. And mm -hmm. Okay, let, let, let's, let, let's go with that route for a moment. Because I think most people, they say, I, the reason I'm not growing is I've not had a good mentor yet. Or I've not had somebody come into my life that, yeah. I can't even, I can't even hear that. I really cannot. Because in an age of this much free information, your ignorance is a choice. I can't hear that. I cannot. My style of teaching, it's the thing that I get picked on for most, is, you know, there's been pieces written in papers and things about how dangerous my message is, my, my message that anyone can do anything. That's my message. They're like, this is so dangerous because what about the people who have these circumstances? What about the people who come from these places? What about, and I'm like, there are too many examples of people who have fought their way out of that adversity right. for you to keep holding on to that excuse. That's right. No, that's very true. It, it drives me crazy because even if that's true, and I'm not belittling your trauma, I've walked through my own. I'm not belittling the season you're in or the trauma that you carry. We are not responsible for the bad things that happen to us, but we are responsible for our healing. And if other people can do it, if there, certainly there are examples of people who couldn't. But if you can see these stories, if you can see the mentors, if you can read the books, if you can go on and do the research about the people who have come out of adversity and they are killing it, why not latch on to that truth instead of the, the one over here that says all the reasons you're not going to measure up? How does that serve you? And yet we live in a culture that is so filled with it. Absolutely. And, and I, I just, you know, I love the fact you, your message is dangerous, but we look at somebody that is a victim message and we somehow want to, want, want to cuddle that. Yeah. And, and, and that's part of the reasons where our, our country is where it is today. Yeah. Is because we haven't, we haven't picked ourselves up. Okay, let's talk about uh, leaders, leadership a little bit. Uh, so, so when did, I, I'm going to assume you did it like every other way. You one day said, I want to be a leader. I mean, how did you know you were a leader? How did, how did that all happen? Gosh, I, I don't know that I, like, <laughs> Dave Ramsey has that great thing where he talks about, like, a baby's born, and they're like, oh, a leader. You know, they say, like, natural-born leader. Like, that's not a thing. It's something that you teach yourself. Uh, but I don't know that I really grasped it in that way. I think I built a, I, I started a business. And when I hired my first employee, it was like, well, Sis, you better figure out something. And truthfully, it took a long time. It took a lot of um, starts and stops and failing and really feel like I was not doing a good job, not leading them well. One of the most powerful things I've ever heard as a business owner, every single problem in an organization, big or small, is the result of the psychology at the top. And that blew my mind. Every single thing. Because either you as the owner are allowing it to be that way, or you've made it that way. And that was huge for me. So I thought, if I have made these problems, then I can unmake them, then I can fix them, then I can find resources. So I don't know that I ever claimed it and said I want to be a leader. To be totally candid with you, I wanted, I wanted to be a successful entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make money. I wanted to have a different life than the one I had grown up with. And I knew that the answer to that, well, I knew other people had done it. So if other people have done it, that means there must be a recipe. That means there must be a path. That's why I get so crazy when people say, like, I don't have a mentor. Yeah, me either. I like to joke, like, my mentors were the greatest mentors in the whole world, and none of them knew I existed. Like, I just, I devoured books. And it's so, every, everything's free. This is what blows my mind. Everything's free. So whatever you're looking for, however you want to grow as a leader, however you want to grow your business, or even for those of you who are watching this who are not in business, maybe you want to grow as a leader in your family. Maybe you want to be a stronger mom or a stronger dad or better for your partner. All of that, inform all of that can be achieved through information and your willingness to work at it. So you're very much into self-taught. I mean, growing yourself, don't wait for somebody to make your day, make your own day, that whole process. 
now that you've come through that and you're doing really well, Rachel, what is, um, what would you say is the greatest return you have received from being self-taught? Oh my gosh. Um, the greatest return I I mean, I guess I, what pops into my head is so much of where I came from as an entrepreneur was out of a place of um, insecurity. Anyone ever feel insecure in their business? So I, everyone else is like, no, I'm perfect. Congratulations. <laughs> we'll hand out your awards later. Um, so I, a lot of times, every time I got... <laughs> I felt, I felt very insecure, and the only way that I knew I could manage my insecurity was with knowledge. So if I, because we tend to really feel insecure, we tend to look outside ourselves on the areas that we don't know a lot about. When you are really confident in a subject, like, nobody needs to tell me how to eat dip. I got that. <laughs> I'm good. I only feel in, like, I only look outside myself for the areas that I feel insecure in, so I thought if I, yeah. could, if I could just teach myself these things. So I think the greatest gift is confidence. Good. I'm confident knowing that even if I get thrown off in something that I'm doing, if I'm standing on a stage and 5,000 people and I fall and trip or, like, pee my pants, which is, like, my greatest fear on stage, it hasn't happened. I don't know why I have that fear, but I do. <laughs> well, I do know why, and those of you who've given birth to children, you also know why. <laughs> But, <laughs> real talk, but uh, I'm confident. That, that's never been said at one of my leadership conferences. It never has. Hey, I, it, not, not one time, Rachel. Let's go on the road together. That's what I know I'm saying. You'll teach about leadership. I'll teach about incontinence. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Okay, let me, let me, okay, what, what, what? <laughs> I tell people all the time, Rachel, it, it, you sometimes are amazed at what I say. You'd be more amazed at what I don't exactly. say. Exactly. I will tell you, we are cut out of the same cloth yeah. on, on that I one. That. I mean, sometimes I'm talking, I'm thinking these thoughts, and I oh, God, help me not to say that. You know, but that's always the thing that gets the biggest laugh, so. <laughs> So, Always. so in other words, let it out. I usually do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we can tell. <laughs> we, we, we can tell. So how, what, what, last question quickly. How do you add value to people? Just, just one way. How, just one way to add value to people. Because, again, I tell people all the time, if you're adding value to people every day, you are becoming very valuable. I, I think for those of you who are in industries where you're coaching uh, or, or doing anything where you're trying to teach a community of people, I show up. And if you are in my online community, you know that's real. I show up five days a week. My husband and I do a live stream every single morning, five days a week for years. We show up. We're on social media. We're encouraging you. I travel all around the world. I, I will sit at a book signing for six hours. I show up for my community. What you are seeing now the success that you are seeing now in my career is the result of a decade of showing up for this That's community. That's yeah. just, I, I, and I love that. I love, I, love, I love that. I love you. I love what your heart says. I love what you have shared with us. And you have been a big, big blessing Thank to you. all of us. Wait, Get wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I know. <laughs> just wait. I have to say it. Wait, this is important, this is important. No, because I don't know how many times in my life I'm gonna get an opportunity like this. And I know that for those of you here in the audience who this man has meant something to you in your careers, this would be a big deal. Um, it's very rare that you get to sit with your hero. It's very rare that, um, I, I know I've, I've heard you on stage over the years and I've read in books that your mission in life is to equip other leaders and you need to know that I am where I am because of your teachings. I have, um, I have learned so much from you for so long, and this, um, this, is, this is a highlight of my year. This is a big deal, so thank you so much for sharing your stage with me.